All right, this was lecture one for unit one, first lecture of the year. It's pretty exciting stuff here. So um, today we're going to start talking about colonies and what is a colony. Uh, this is all review for you. Uh, we, uh, you've talked about this in eighth grade. Uh, you talked about it earlier than that, probably in fourth grade or fifth grade. So we're going to kind of continue on here with a brief uh, overview of what a colony is and some of the important facts that we want to talk about. Uh, remember when uh, writing the lecture uh, in your notes that you only need to write the underlined stuff. There's a couple of slides that you're going to need to write everything or some other stuff, but I'll tell you what those are and, uh, and I'll let you know what you need to write there. All right, so here we go. So a colony is a territory or a possession of another country that has a limited self-government. And it's different than just acquiring land and then ruling that land. Um, it does have to have its own self-government. So uh, when we, or when the English took the colonies here in America, uh, the king could not rule over the colonies from across the Atlantic Ocean. So he sent people here that would uh, kind of rule those colonies from here because uh, it just doesn't make sense logistically like if um, you know we were to take over Mexico we could probably rule Mexico here and we wouldn't have to um, you know appoint governors or things or and have them um, rule themselves still we would want to have complete control of them all right so nations claim colonies to enhance their power and wealth uh, they wanted to make sure that they could get as much uh, gold as possible and we'll talk about that uh, they wanted to have land they wanted to you know have places around the world that they could have um, you know, free trade with, and those are um, some of the big reasons why you'd want to have a colony. Um, you wouldn't want to just take over like a bunch of land and then have to manage it. It's it's tough to manage land, and as I said, from far away, especially. So you want to take places of strategic importance to you, and if they have a lot of uh, either money or they have a lot of um, goods that they can be created there, then it's worth taking those those areas. Uh, there's uh, two different types of colonies. There are joint stock colonies and there's proprietary colonies. Uh, in order to get a colony, you can't just go take land. If you're England, you need to go and get uh, permission from the king, and that's called a charter. And so once the, char the king gives you permission to go on that land, um, then you can go ahead and take that land. And, and the king is going to want to get something out of this. So um, in a joint stock company, uh, there's investors that are going to go and invest and give money um, and then they send money back to the king and then a proprietary colony is paid for by the king um, and then money goes back to the king but no matter what the England is making money off of these colonies so why become a colonist okay either for profit and power or because of religious persecution so these are push, push and pull factors and we'll talk all about that um, or we'll talk about push and pull factors all year but profit and power is pulling them out of the colonies. If they go to the colonies and they can make money or become more powerful, that's good. So if you're stuck in a dead-end job in, the, in England and you want to do something else and you're adventuresome, you could leave and go uh, to the colonies and try to make a, a better name for yourself. On the other hand, uh, religious persecution was a huge problem in England. If you guys remember uh, the formation of the Church of England moving out of the Catholic Church, so um, Catholics were being persecuted at a high level in England by uh, people that were trying to move away from Catholicism. So that, uh, the United States, or the colonies would be a good spot for those uh, people to go if they were afraid of persecution. And that's a that's a push factor pushing them out of the colony. Uh, when we come to the colonies, there's not just one colony. There's a ton of colonies. There's 13 of them. And it makes sense to have smaller colonies um, for political reasons and just logistical reasons. Uh, it's really hard to manage a really large territory. So we have me separate into 13 colonies, and each colony can kind of take care of itself. Uh, also, people in the north and the northern colonies wanted things differently than those in the southern colonies. And it makes sense to have different governments that can support the people that are living in those territories. Uh, it wouldn't make sense, you know, for people that love that are all about industry in the north um, to be ruling people that are all about um, agriculture in the south. So um, it makes sense. Uh, so in ruling these colonies, um, governors are elected or chosen actually by the king. Um, they're not elected by the people. Uh, but they do have locally elected legislators. So the, the governor is going to do what the king wants, and then the legislator is going to try to get the governor to do what the people want. Uh, there's a key term uh, when we deal with the colonies called salutary neglect. Okay, and salutary, if you think of that word, you think of the king. Okay, and then neglect is obviously leaving being left alone. Um, 
and it allows the, the colonies to become more autonomous. So the king is basically letting the colonists do whatever they want as far as politically, industrially, whatever they need to do to survive. He can do it however they wish as long as they are paying the king his money. So he really doesn't care what they do as long as he's making money. So what this allows them to do is become autonomous, especially within government. So they can create their own uh, democracies there and they kind of move away from the idea of having a king. So uh, this allows them to practice different forms of government in order to, um, you know, which is going to kind of lead to us forming our own country. So uh, the king's kind of laziness allows us to really start to form, form our ideas and uh, kind of push towards a democracy. Uh, this is a, is a slide that you need to write all these things up top. Okay, so on the left we have the northern colonies, on the middle we have the middle colonies, and on the right we have the southern colonies. And you need to kind of know what these colonies are famous for, like what they like to do um, and what they produce. So you can see the differences in what these colonies are doing. So uh, if you need to pause the slide, write down all the things that are in those um, in these white boxes up top. So you can see like the major exports in the north are fur and skins, cattle and grain, and then they do fish. And then iron, they build ships, they make rum, and they uh, produce timber. There's a lot of forests up in the north. And there's whaling products. And you can see the differences as it kind of moves down. There's similarities in all of them, but they're not, uh, there are key differences in what these, um, in these colonies like to, like to produce. And you can see there's more agriculture in nearing the south. And up north, it's more about production and what they can create. And you kind of see which colonies are famous for, or you know, famous for each one of these things for producing these things, and um, and kind of where they're going from there. All right. So if you need more time to write, pause the slide. If not, um, we're going to continue. One of the key concepts of uh, the colonies and the idea of having colonies is mercantilism. It's an economic term, and basically what it what it is is it needs nations need as much gold and silver as possible to survive. So the idea of, of colonization is to obtain as much of that. Okay, and, it, and basically under mercantilism, there's a finite amount of wealth in the world. And in order to get as much wealth as possible, you got You have to take it from someone else. So it's not going. You can't just print money or create gold. You can find gold, um, but that gold's already accounted for in the world. So we're trying to get as much as possible. So coming to the colonies allows us to obtain more gold. Okay, and so we also wanted to. Um, export and sell or sell more goods than they import so if we can make more goods produce more goods and sell them to other places that's good uh, England for example could sell not only take stuff from the colonies but they could also sell things to the colonies so then they're actually bringing in more wealth in in both ways in, in that manner so here's a little uh, graph that I can use to show you um, I use the United States instead of the colonies but it, you will get you'll get the point so Say back in, in uh, you know the colonial times, this is how the, the wealth of the world is divided up. Obviously, there's more countries than this. But uh, if the United States wants to gain more wealth, you have to take it from somewhere else. So you're basically going to have to go and take uh, someone else's money. So right here, the United States is going to take some money from Holland. And that's kind of how it works. So now the United States has more money, but Holland has less. Okay, you can't take more money than there is in existence. You can't take money from out here in this space because there is no money left. This is another slide you need to write everything. So indentured servants, okay, uh, they're members of the British lower class. Uh, they left England uh, to work as servants in the colonies exchange, in exchange for food, shelter, and debt forgiveness. Usually this term is in, um, four to seven years of servitude. And you will, after that, you um, have the, the ability for uh, social mobility. So you can move up in the rankings of, of the class, of class structure. So you go from England, you take this risk, you're basically um, doing whatever um, is needed of you for four to seven years, and then you're, you're free and you are able to do whatever you need to. Um, it's a good way for people to, as I said, um, move through the class system and get out of poverty in England and make them make a way for themselves in the colonies they would do this like if they didn't have enough money to get here so it was a way to pay for the ride here and then eventually they would be free and lastly we have the triangular trade and this is just real quick as like kind of a, um, a review uh, ships would go from England they would go into Africa pick up stuff from Africa including slaves bring them to the Americas drop them off drop off slaves pick up new 
um, goods that they could buy here and then take them back to England, sell them in England, and then just kind of keep moving um, in that triangular trade. So that's kind of a way that um, we were able, to, or the colonies were able to make money. All right, and that's going to be it for your lecture on the colonies. Thank you.